Okay, morning everybody. My name is Dan. I'm the uh, facilities and shoe manager for East Riding College. Hi, uh, my name's Paul Longley. Um, I'm lead facilitator of Andy's Man Club Hull. Just want to tell us a little bit about Andy's Man Club. If any of the students or anything that are listening haven't heard of it, um, and then yeah, just let us know about it. Well, Andy's Man Club first started in 2016 in Halifax. Um, a young guy called Andrew Roberts, um, hence the name Andrew, Andy's Man Club. He sadly took his own life with no history of mental ill health at all. So Lou Campbell, who's um, Andy's brother-in-law, and Elaine Roberts, his mother, set up a like a coffee club in Halifax because they, did, they didn't want any other family to experience what their family was currently going through and went through. So it started off in Halifax. I think they had about nine people to their first meeting. And now Andy's Man Club's got 41 clubs nationally. And um, we get a thousand men. Before COVID, we, used, we, we was touching a thousand men each and every Monday night. Us in Hull, we started a year later. So we started off with six guys. Last year, we helped 2,800 guys in Hull. And like I said, we do 28,000 men nationally each year. And that was with 28 clubs. Now we've got 41. So obviously, COVID, we had to develop the um, meetings online. Uh, we work on five questions. You don't have to talk at Andy's Man Club if you don't want to. You can come and just listen. But actually seeing the guys on their journey over months of turning up at Andy's Man Club. We don't do anything brilliant. We're not trained professionals. All we do, we listen, we share, we talk. And some people think they're the only person with a, that problem. But when they see that there's other people out there sh with the same or similar problem, they can share it. And that is absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, we do that, like I say, through the pandemic. It was online. It's not the same. We're back open now. We've got three clubs in Hull. We've got Echo. Um, of Golden Street, we've got No Full Boxing Club, um, and we've also just opened a club in Beverly now. Um, so we we also got Sirius High School, um, which is Hull, we've teamed up with Hull FC, which will be opening again in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, it's it's absolutely brilliant, and awareness is key. And I'd just like to mention for the ladies that are watching this club, my wife and my friend's wife. They've opened a first ladies club in Hull, which is a Wednesday night. Um, so that's seven o'clock and it's run similar to Andy's Man Club, but totally separate. So it's just for ladies. So just putting it out there. So um, if any ladies are watching this, there is help out there for them as well. Oh, no, that's good. Something that I liked on the when I was looking on the website, Paul, was um, for Andy's Man's Club um, that really stood out for me was that it said you don't have to have a mental health sort of diagnosed problem or you don't have to have suffered yeah. with anything it's just a place to go to talk and I think I don't know sort of what Dan thinks but I thought that was really good because it's almost about stopping it before it gets to that point you know allowing men to realize that let's talk before it gets to you know the crisis point and something that that really stood out for me and I think if I was if I was struggling and I read that because sometimes with mental health sort of groups and things, you think, oh, well, I can't go because I'm not at that point. I've not got to that point. So can I go? And actually, by putting that on the website, just would put my mind at rest. Um, I don't know what you think about that, Dan. As I've gone through the years and dealt with sort of um, significant events in my life, um, at the time, I promised my mum that I would... Uh, they all said, oh, no, no, I don't need that, I don't need that, what do I need that for? It's ridiculous, but I went, and it was literally, I went, I, I just spoke for hours, and I felt fantastic afterwards, I really genuinely felt really good afterwards, and it was just from talking, and I'm still bad at it now, I still bottle things up now, and when people say, oh, you're right, Dan, yeah, I'm okay, I'm always okay, I'm Dan, everyone knows Dan's okay, but you're not, and and you've really got to talk and and I'm I, I I'm so bad at it because I will support everybody and anybody who are struggling um you know and I've lost family members close family members through you know taking their own lives um and I coach people and support them and encourage them to develop etc cetera, etc cetera. but um I, I really lack at looking after myself 
um, when I should do really because I can't really preach it and not practice it myself. So yeah, it, it was really good to know that um, Andy's Man Club is out there and is available for absolutely anybody, regardless of whether you've had previous mental health issues or you, you feel like you're starting to struggle a little bit now in life, but you've had no diagnosis and you, or you just want to go somewhere and talk and you know, it doesn't have to be that butch in the pub with your mates hiding it and banter you can actually go and have a civilized conversation with a coffee and just open up yeah and that's and i think like i said that's why i think it stood out for me that just that sort of one that one sentence i just think that would you know it's such an approachable way to sort of be and i do think that so that's sort of, it sort of leads us on to my next um question which is do you think that um, male mental health is talked about enough. I believe males don't talk enough, and there is there is a there is still some stigmas um, surrounding it. And I'll I'll leave that to the next question. Um, what I've prepared for you for that one. <laughs> um, but no, we don't talk enough. Hence why I do what I do. Hence why I come onto podcasts like this. Hence it's great why you're doing a podcast like this because. Like Dan just said, he didn't know about Andy's Man Club. And the more people that know about Andy's Man Club, the more they, re- they look at these podcasts and see how I've shown myself being vulnerable. I go around and doing my talks and I put my life in front of everybody. And it doesn't bother me anymore because I believe that if I can help one person every single day, then job done. That's, yeah. that, that's, my, that's my goal and that's my why each and every day. That's lo- lovely to hear. So, Dan, what's your what's your opinion on the last question in regards to, do you still think there's a stigma or do you think we talk about it enough? I think I know your answer, but... <laughs> yeah, it's, there's certainly a stigma around it still, and you can see it in the young in the young uh, generation where it's all classed as bants and banter and you can't have that sort of problem to, to come about with and... Then in, in the, the older generation where it is, I'm a man and, you know, we, we're, we're cavemen and we make fire and we mustn't show any emotion. And, and there's that massive disjointed gap between. And, and fortunately, like I say, because I do a lot of life coaching and support, et cetera, et cetera. And I surround myself um, around people who, who need support or are happy to talk and open up. I'm kind of in a in an area where people do open up, but I certainly do see it um, in and around the college, friends, um, uh, even my close friends who who have gone through troubling times, things that have come back to bite them from when they were younger, and they that's hit them suddenly, or they've never grieved over losing a parent, and you know, 20 years later, it's you know knocked them for six, and it's come out of the blue, and they don't know why, you know, all these sort of things they do come back and. Some, sometimes you see someone from the older generation who who are predominantly mindset of don't show emotion, don't react, don't do this, don't do that, who can can change and do open up. And it's really nice to see. And they just need that encouragement and reassurance and um, that trust there that, you know, whatever you say, it's going to be in confidence and you're not going to be laughed at and no one's going to start pointing fingers or start talking about it. And once you can assure them of that, and then you can provide that follow-on support and coaching going forward. Then they open up a lot better. But certainly in in the the, the guys that come to the college, they're all in groups and it's all banter. And one of the lads has got an issue because of his girlfriend, and they all start start you know having a laugh and a joke about it all. But actually, although he might be having a laugh and a joke back. You know, when he gets that a minute or two by himself, you know, you can see his head drop and you just think, come on, guys, just be a bit more sensitive about other people's feelings and, and how they're actually feeling about it. Because, yeah, they might be saying it in a, in a jokey way to start with. But actually, that's that that little test the water, cry for help type situation that they're just wondering whether their friends are going to support them if they did mention, you know, a scenario and then they kind of get pushed back by banter and then they close up again. So, yeah, it's really, it's really, it's hard to watch 
um, more than anything. And, and I know you, you particularly, Jody, you, you kind of track everyone that comes in and from one day to the next, you can see whether they're, they come skipping through the door or whether they're dragging <laughs> their heels and their heads down and they're not really sort of alert to their surroundings and stuff and you jump straight onto them, which is great. But um, no, it's really frustrating for me that that stigma is certainly still around and it certainly isn't isn't talked about enough. Yeah, and I think there's definitely, you know, I, I've had this conversation, I don't know how many times with, with students in the college, but there's definitely a, a very fine line between the banter and then it turning into like, like you've just said, like, come on guys, like you're taking it a little bit far now. Clearly he's, he's not, love, you know, he's not joining in anymore. You know, it's not, it isn't banter if not everybody is involved, you know, not everybody's involved in that situation, you know, like, like you've said, it's about recognise, recognising those signs to, okay, five minutes ago, they might have, they, they might have been in on the joke, but now they're not, you're taking it to the point. So it's about that fine line of stepping it over. My next, my next question is, why do you think men don't find it easy to talk about the feelings? So whether that be in regards to mental health or just in general? There's three main stigmas, stigmas why men don't talk. They don't want to be a burden on the family, the friends. They don't want to. It's, they don't want to be embarrassed by showing their emotions, and some men show it as a weakness, right? So put them three stigmas together. Now we've got to break them barriers down. If you ask for help, it's apps. They'll absolutely give you it in droves. So calling out for help and talking, that's what you need to do. There's no need to be embarrassed because there's about two hundred and sixty-five thousand people in Hull and the outskirts, roughly. So there's one in four people that suffer with mental ill health. So there's 60 odd thousand people in Hull suffering some form of mental ill health. So we're tip, we're touching the tip of the iceberg, what we do, right? So don't be embarrassed because you'll come out and talk to people and you'll find there's more people who are suffering than you actually think, right? So you'll get the support and it's not a weakness. To actually come out and ask for help and show your emotions and, sh and talk about your thoughts it's absolutely powerful, so it's not a weakness at all. We've, we've got to battle through them, and we've got to convince people that they're not any of them three. Absolutely. And I think, like you said, that's why we do these things. You know, like you you made a comment earlier, like if you help one person in every day, then then you've done your job. And that's that's why I, I do these things. I do these. I started these podcasts. You know, these podcasts, we've talked about all sorts of things, and I've done exactly what you've just said you know I've opened myself up about like what I've been through in the past in regards to bullying eating disorders all sorts of things that I've been through but actually by talking and opening yourself up it allows you know the students almost I've noticed that students open up more to me because they're like oh I didn't know that you went through that journey and now you actually I can really you can relate to what I'm telling you and I think that's something that's very important in regards to mental health and things like that and that's why obviously I wanted Dan to come on was because the students relate to Dan and the will talk there is the, the students here that will talk to Dan about mental health because Dan's open about what he's been through and I'm open about what I've been through and we've all been there so we can relate to what they're going through I think sometimes people find it hard to speak to someone because they're like oh you don't know what I feel at this moment in time so I do think it's important that we do talk about everything that we've been through and that's why I think hopefully students listening to this podcast obviously get a lot from Paul because of the amazing things that he does but also get a lot from like me and Dan because they'll be like oh well actually I know that I can speak to them too I've got two allies in that college that I can come to and that I know have been there and um, so just quickly Dan is there anything you want to add to why you think men don't don't talk and then we'll sort of wrap it up at the end uh, yeah no I absolutely completely agree with what Paul said to be honest and a lot of people do go around thinking uh you you, you don't know what I'm, I'm going through you haven't walked in my shoes and been there you don't understand but actually um it, it's it's almost like when you when you buy that first car and you're like oh nobody else has got one of these and then all of a sudden you see like two three four five six seven of them on the road and you think oh they're really common um once you've opened up you, you then realize that actually there's a world full of people that have have gone through that same path just maybe slightly different scenarios or it's gone around a different way but um you know once you've opened up and you get through it you become stronger and, and mentally you become stronger to be able to then deal with it but just knowing that you've got allies 
who can help you who have been there done it and come out the other side do you want to give me your top tip for any sort of male listener or um young person basically your top tip for them yeah my top tip is um it's okay to talk um that's what we say and his man club um share your emotions share your thoughts share your feelings because the support you'll get back is absolutely vast